Welcome to How To with Instant Atlas Single Map Template. If you want more information on how to create this atlas that we're going to be going through today, all you need to do is have a look at the How To with Instant Atlas Publisher video. The data that we've put in here is purely fictitious, and to see how to put that in, you can have a look at the How To with Instant Atlas Excel Data Manager video. All right, let's have a look through the Single Map Template. In this top left hand corner over here, you can see I've got the theme name, I've got the indicator, and I've got the date that I've currently got selected. If I want to change the data that I'm looking at, I need to click on data, the theme that I'm interested in, the indicator that I'm interested in, and also the date. You can see now that's changed in all of my different components, and so now I can also put on a filter. Click on the filter button. If you've set one up in the Excel workbook or access. I can click on my filter here, click on the area and you can see it shows up just in the map and just those areas show up in my bar chart and data table. If I right click I can clear my filter selection and then I can move over and have a look at the legend. You can see each of these different breaks here in the map and I can select one of those areas and it will select all of the areas that are within the classification group right click and I can clear that selection. Now I can also turn off postcode sectors, turn it on and open the legend settings. So let's have a look at the legend settings. I can change this to be for example a dark blue outline. I can change the color if I like. I can also, let's make that green, I can also change the number of areas. Now I've just got the four different um, classes there and I can also change the kind of classifiers I've got and I'm going to change that to natural breaks. Okay, I'm going to close that and you can see I've got my four different classes here and my areas all fit into those four classes or the no data class. I can turn on my postcode districts and you can see now the red line has appeared and I can also turn on my background mapping if I have some. I can turn those off as well just as easily. Right, let's move over to the map now. If I have a look at the map, I can select areas. If I hold down control, I can select multiple areas. And you can show that those not only select in the map, but also on the data table, the time series chart, and also the bar chart. I can zoom in a set extent using the zoom in button. I can zoom out a set extent using the zoom out button. And if I want to zoom to full, all I need to do is click on the zoom to full button. In the top right hand corner, I have got my drag and this drag allows me to drag any of the components and they've all got one in the top right hand corner. So let's move that around. I can move it to here. So I wanted to print that somewhere else. Just need to drag it around. I'm going to drag it back for now and I'm going to resize that by clicking the maximize button. You can see now it's quite large. I want to minimize that again, I just click the restore down button. I can also use this close button, which is the cross in the top right hand corner. I've got my copyright in the bottom right hand corner. And I can have also got this data table over here. Now the data table shows the areas that have been selected. I've got my names in my name column. I've got the data that is being mapped in my indicator column. And I've got the class that it is this er each area is within and the color of that in this first area here. I've got the zoom to an area, magnifying glass, which I can click on. And remember, I can just click on this zoom to full extent button here and it will just go zoom back out. I have got a notes button here. Now that notes button is currently going to a placeholder, but could go to a website or any document, for example, a PDF or a Word document or Excel. I have got scroll buttons here, so I can just scroll up and down here on the, with using that bar. And then I've got a notes button here, which will go to the same area as this notes one here does currently. And I've got a help page as well, which will give you some information there if, if you've got any um, questions about how to use this front end of the Instant Atlas Dynamic Report. Down here you can see I've got my time series chart with my y-axis with my values on it and my x-axis has got my dates on it. Obviously this has only got two dates as can be seen 
underneath each of these, these have both got two dates actually, each of these indicators, but you can have multiple dates, uh, you can have a lot of dates in there per indicator. I've got my bar chart on the left hand side and you can see that it puts the areas, not only shows the values on the y-axis but puts them into each of the classes there as well with the colorings. As I hover on these areas, not only here in the bar chart, but also on the map, you can see I've got my geographic feature name and also the value that is associated to that area. On the left hand side here, I've got the pie chart. If I select one of these areas, it will not only by hovering, I can see the uh, percentage of areas which is within that class, but it also can select those areas, which is fantastic. That is how simple it is to use the Instant Atlas single map template, Instant Atlas report. As I said earlier in this video, if you want to find out how to create an Instant Atlas dynamic report, do refer to the How To with Instant Atlas Publisher video.